Hello there, Creative Pro friends. Kara Plichinich here. And today I'm going to talk you through what you want to do the very first time you install and launch Adobe InDesign, or if you've recently updated um, or somehow you've reset everything and you just want to kind of build back to where you had it. So let's dive in. This is what InDesign refers to as the home screen. And to actually get into the application without opening a document, we just want to come up here and click this little InDesign icon. So here we can actually see our workspace even without a document open. And it's important that we do these settings and set all of these different preferences, etc., without any open documents. And that way, the, the settings that we choose will stick and become the default for all new documents going forward. So it's not going to overwrite settings in existing documents, but it will become the default going forward. So we've got no documents open. And of course, it's also worth pointing out that everything I'm sharing with you today is my own personal preference. So my hope is that it gives you something to think about, but obviously you would choose the settings that you like for the way that you work. So we're going to be talking about setting our preferences, organizing the panels and the workspace to be the way we want, and addressing any pet peeves about other settings in InDesign that we might want to change. So let's start with our preferences. First thing we're going to do is open up our preferences dialog by pressing Command or Control K. So here on the left, we have the different categories of preferences. Here under General, I like to make sure that I don't see that home screen when I have no documents open. If you like the home screen, then you might want to leave this on. I choose to turn that off. Next, I'll come down here to Interface. You can choose the color theme that you want to apply to your interface. Some people like to uncheck this option to match the pasteboard to the theme color. Some people feel like that makes it harder to see things that are on your pasteboard. So if you want to change that, you can. I'm going to skip down here to the type settings. I like to make sure that I've got typographer's quotes enabled and that the letting settings get applied to entire paragraphs rather than individual line pairs. Next, let's jump down to units and increments. Here is where we tell InDesign what units we'd like to work with. So whether that's points, picas, millimeters, what have you, this is where you choose it. So I'm going to make sure that I've got mine set to inches. And down here, you can actually set the increments of change that happen when you use your keyboard when you're working with type settings. So you can adjust, you know, how much every time you use the keyboard shortcut, how much you're adjusting your size or letting, kerning, tracking, etc. I'm going to jump down here to display performance. And I want to make sure that my default view for all my graphics, etc. is set to high quality. Then I'm going to go, jump down here to file handling options. And if you want to see more or less recent file items displayed, uh, either on that home screen or from the file open recent menu, this is where you can control that. So I think 10 sounds good. I'm going to leave that set and click OK. All right, so that is a look at some of the preferences that you might want to tweak. Next, let's talk about the panels and the workspace. So when you first launch InDesign, I believe it defaults to what it calls the Essentials Workspace. So I'm going to reset. So here we have the Essentials Workspace. So there's not a lot open here. So maybe you like this, but if you want to really customize your space, it can be helpful to start from the Advanced Workspace settings. So I'm going to go to Window, Workspace, and I'm going to choose Advanced. And then let me make sure that this is the default Advanced. Yeah, so here we go. So here we have some additional open panels. And from here, I'm just going to customize the way that I like to have stuff set up. So for example, the Links panel, I'm going to drag this out and tuck it here along with Stroke, Swatches, libraries, and all of my styles. 
some of these like effects. I'm going to close, gradient, I'm going to close, and layers I'll drag out and below, below the pages panel. There we are. And I'm going to pop them open. So I like to have my pages panel and my layers panel fully opened. And we can decide how you know wide or narrow we want it to be. And then all of these little guys where there's a lot more settings that I use all the time, I like to have these collapsed. So I can pop them open when I need them and then I can get them out of my way the rest of the time. So if I wanna add something to this, I would go and I would get my glyphs panel and I would tuck that over here as well. And I think that's pretty much that's how I like to have it. But within these panels, we can also customize the way that they are set up. So for example, under links, if I open my links panel and I come to the panel menu, I can come down to panel options and I can choose like what information is going to be displayed here in the panel. So obviously the things that you want to see might be different. So there's two columns here. We can view the this data in the um, actual column or down below in this sort of extended area. So basically, I want to be able to see the status of the in, of the link and the page number it's on and the effective PPI without opening this bottom panel. So I'm going to click OK. And now we can see that that's the data that would be displayed here for each link. And if I want that additional info, I can twirl this open as well. Let's talk about our swatches panel. So here we see some colors in here. So what's nice is because we have no documents open, if we have brand colors, you know, for your clients or companies, whatever we want to load so that it's just here all the time and you don't have to reload it every time you're creating a new document, you want to go ahead and do that now while you do not have any documents open and then they'll just always be there for you. So you can come to the swatches panel menu and just choose load swatches and then load them from wherever you've got them saved or even from within another document. So these are the colors that I like to just keep here for basic purposes, I guess. And I'm going to drag this registration one all the way down so I don't accidentally click it when I am choosing one of these common swatches. Those same things can be applied to your paragraph, character, and object style. Oop, here we go, object style panels. So if you have existing styles that you use over and over and over again, and you just want them here by default, now's the time to load them in while you do not have any documents open. And that way they will just be part of the default for every new document you create. So once we have our workspace set up the way we want, let's save it. So we'll go to Window Workspace. We'll choose New Workspace and then give it a name. I already have a workspace named with my name. So when I click OK, it's going to ask me if I want to replace it. And I'm going to say yes. So now, no matter how much I mess up my workspace, I can always reset it back here from my workspace, I can always select it. And even if I mess it up, I can just reset it again at any time and it will bring me back to this. So that's a look at setting up our preferences and our panels. Now I like to take care of my peeves, the things that make me so <laughs> frustrated when I'm working in InDesign that I haven't set up the way I like. One of my biggest pet peeves is anytime I'm using the type tool and I end up with a funny font by mistake. I just want my default font to be something simple, like maybe League Gothic, maybe 10 points. So whatever settings we establish for the type tool with no documents open, that will become our default. Next on my list of pet peeves, under the view menu, I like to come down here to extras to make sure that the content grabber is not on. But that's just me. You might love the content grabber. The next thing I like to do is adjust my object fit settings. So I'm going to go to object, fitting, frame fitting options. And I like to have this set to fill frame proportionally. And I like to turn off auto fit. 
What are some of your favorite preferences or peeves that you just have to change before you can do anything else? Let me know in the comments below. And for more information and resources on all things InDesign and beyond, be sure to check out creativepro.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.